Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Odo Zendaiduke and in this video I take a look at the MIDI controller Korg Nano Control 2 and show you how I have assigned a lot of functions to the different knobs and buttons with the help of the generic Flexi script from Driven by Moss. You can find more detailed videos about the generic Flexi script, the modes and options on my channel. Also a very detailed video on how I planned and configured the very simple Arturia Microlabs MIDI controller. This video is not so detailed anymore. I show an overview and which functions I have put on the Korg Nano Control 2 in order to configure it optimally to my needs. Hopefully this will give you a few ideas on how you can or want to configure your Korg Nano Control 2 or even a completely different MIDI controller. Since I present a lot of ideas and experiences in my videos in a very compact way, which is also a lot of work and takes a lot of time, I would be happy if you give the video a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment. However, I would only recommend a subscription if you are interested in more interesting content about music production. Let's get started. The small Korg Nano Controller 2 MIDI controller is a pure control controller. It has neither keyboard keys nor pads. The controller can be controlled in several modes. Korg has included an integration for a few DAWs. But I can't say anything about this as I haven't tested it. Unfortunately, Korg still doesn't provide an integration for Pitwick. But there's a MIDI CC mode. The Korg modes and all assignments can be changed via an additional editor from Korg. But as with the Arturia controllers, this has not yet arrived in the 20s of the 20th century and an obscure USB MIDI driver still has to be installed on obscure operating systems. Here too, I would like to see a platform independent version, especially because of the new music production superstar Linux. Or as my 23 year old Novation MIDI controller can already do, a configuration directly on the device without the need for another computer, smartphone, toaster or other unnecessary dependency. The cheap computing power has long been available. This controller also has enough buttons and now all that remains is for all manufacturers to arrive in the technological present. But as I said, there is a MIDI CC mode and the controller is supplied with this mode from the factory. That is definitely a well thought out move. The controller has eight rotary knobs, eight faders, eight groups of solo, mute and record buttons, one transport field with record, play, stop, forward and rewind buttons, and six additional special buttons with are uh, overridden with track and marker. So 51 buttons, knobs and faders in total. Quite a lot is already possible here. As I said, Korg does not provide a DAW integration for Bitwig out of the box. Bitwig has a somewhat older Korg Nano Control 2 controller script, but I wasn't really convinced by its limited functionality. At some point I went and thought out about what my workflow looks like, which functions I often needed to access quickly, wrote everything down, noted the data from the controller and then got to work in several iterations. And the following is the result. As I said, this is not a step-by-step -step guide for that there are the other three videos about the generic Flexi script, the modes and options, and the detailed explanation of the Arturia Microlab controller. But I still want to explain a little of what I did here and also the little special features that lurk in this configuration. First of all, the special features. There's a global shift button. With this global shift button, you can use one button, press it down and press another button like a shift button would do. I put that global shift button on the set button. 
over here. And if you hold the set button and press the play button, you got a repeat uh, toggle on and off function or loop toggle on and off function. Of course, I could have configured this purely for the set button, but I hope that Bitwig will continue to develop the functionality so that much more will be possible with this global shift function. Then it's about the keyboard pads configuration, where the routings can be set to off or on. There are certain MIDI CCs. These are so-called RPNs, pronounced as registered parameter numbers. This means that they have a meaning in the MIDI standard. If a button is such an RPN, this should not be forwarded to the DAW here to Bitwig. Otherwise, Bitwig will follow the MIDI standard and also trigger a function. Normally, you don't want that. But maybe there's a scenario somewhere that would make sense. If so, let me know in the comments. So if you want to know more about MIDI messages, then watch my video about it. Like MIDI messages, MSB, LSB, RPN, NRPN, and SysX. To continue. So fader number two sends MIDI CC number one. MIDI CC number one is an RPN and is normally assigned to the mod wheel. So you should definitely set the routing here to off. Otherwise, you will still have a vibrato at the start with many synth. For record button number one, which sends CC64, and therefore has the MIDI CC RPN sustain 64, also set the routing to off. And knobs versus faders discussion. In a conversation with another music producer, the following was pointed out to me. If you have eight knobs and eight faders, then assign the faders to the modes with which you can control remote controls, volume faders, and other things because in extreme cases you can control eight parameters with eight fingers at the same time. Of course, this is not possible with the rotary controls, a small and simple but highly important detail. So now let's briefly go through the functions. So this is the configuration of the Korg Nano Control 2 I thought out and um, that suits my workflow best. Let's start with uh, maybe the transport section or the section over here. So what you can see is the play, stop, record and previous and next bar. I just make that a little bit smaller here. So if you press play, you see the play cursor is running over here. If I press play again, it stops over here. If I press play twice, it jumps back. If I press play and use the stop button, it just stops and jumps back. Now the global shift button with the set and the play button. So if I use the set and play button, you see that this area around the loop bar toggles on and off. Same as I as if I click over here. Okay. So then there is um, the forward and the rewind button. If I press that, you see that the cursor is jumping one bar forward and one bar backward every time I press these keys. Then there is an undo button, very important button. If I create a new clip and I don't want it, I just press on the cycle again and it's weg. <laughs> and it's away, it's not weg. It's weg as well, but in German it's weg. In English it's still there. So this Heisenberg's language program. Okay, it's there, but not. 
Then these buttons is from the um, mode, from the generic flexi mode function, the next item and previous item, these forward and backward button. And this forward and backward button with a marker is next item page and previous item page. Global shift I already explained. So then go to the different modes or the different buttons over here. So here you see the solo mute and record button. So these buttons are a little special because they don't send MIDI CCs, they send MMCs, MIDI machine control changes or MIDI control changes, MIDI machine changes. And um, if I press the solo button over here, you see that the solo goes on, but as soon as I release the button, solo goes off. First I thought, oh damn, this doesn't work. But sometimes you want just listen uh, a short time to solo, so you can hold that down and release that. So I decided that this is the temporary selected track solo, and the next record button over here is permanent solo. So if I press the button over here, it stays on solo as soon as long as I press again the record button again. The mute button, you may wonder what it is, but it mutes the selected channel. And the record button, you guessed it, it's the arm function over here as if I press or click on the button over here. Then let's go over to the next solo buttons. The solo button two here is previous or next mode. If I put that a little bit too um, transparent, now I can switch with this solo mode to the previous mode. Send eight, send seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Panorama mode, volume mode, track mode, device mode, and again send. And the next is the Next solo button is the next mode, so you can switch to the next mode. Send, wait, send two, send three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Device, track, volume, panorama, send, one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Then on the um, solo button number four is the beginning where you can, or the, sorry, the solo button number three is the first button where you can jump directly to mode, to the first send mode, to the track mode, to the volume mode, to the panorama mode, and to the device mode. So if I do that a little bit more transparent, I jump to the send one, to the track, to the volume, to the panorama, to the device, to the track, to the volume, to the send, to the device. So it's a direct jump. These are the solo buttons. On top of the solo buttons, there are the rotary knobs. And the rotary knobs are defined to control the selected tracks, the selected track. So the one I am currently on it. So the first Rotary knob controls the volume of the track. The second knob controls the panorama of the track. And from the third knob, it controls the scent of the selected track. So you're very flexible while you're working on the track. Okay, then maybe let's um, start with the faders. And the faders are a combination from the from the modes that I uh, explained to you, and the modes are mostly similar one to another, except the device mode. And um, maybe, okay, why not just start with the track mode? So I go over to the track mode over here, and in the track mode, you see selected these tracks where you can see the, the little uh, triangles over here. So in track mode, I can select with my faders this one, this one, and the different six cents, okay? When I now jump to volume, I can control 
the eight selected tracks simultaneously the volume faders. If I jump to with a uh, next item page to the next eight, I only have 11. I can control the next eight volume knobs. Jump back and this is the volume. So if I go now, for example, to Panorama, I can configure all the Panorama knobs of the selected eight block over here. If I jump to the next page, the next eight and this three only because I only have 11 um, simultaneously. Then what have we left? Volume, track, ah, the sense. Now I can use the sense and just can maybe go back so you can see a little bit more eight, eight cents simultaneously. And with the next mode, I can switch to send two and go to the next line, next mode, next send mode for next send mode, next send mode. And so I can really just select all the different scents with my controller. Okay. So these are the faders with the select item value. And now we have the bottom part over here with the modes, uh, uh, the mutes and the record buttons. So the first two we already talked about, this is the mute button that sets the current track to mute. Okay. Then the record button over here is uh, arm the selected track. Then go to the next mute. The next mute knob, the second mute knob, is to change the height of the tracks. Sometimes you have um, many tracks ongoing and you want to have a better overview so you can just switch everything to half the height. Then the next mute button. Uh, let's say here the record button I already mentioned is the solo the track. So this is a, a permanent solo of the track. You can solo that. Then the next mute and the, the, the third and the fourth mute button is punch in, punch out. These two. So the next mute buttons, the third and the fourth mute button is toggle remote controls and toggle device. And toggle remote controls is just open and close the remote controls over here, this one. And uh, this toggle device toggles the device over here. It closes the device. So you can close it completely or normally the device is like this and pressing the both buttons at the same time, you just switch it to only remote control parameter or you open it again or you close it completely again. You can switch between the devices over here, between the the second device and the first device. And now I could switch it here too, for example. And this is even faster than with the keyboard. So then with the um, record buttons on the bottom over here, you switch punch in, punch out. So this area here, punch in, punch out both at the same time or after each other. This is when you um, want to record or when you mark a region where you want to record something with a loop marker, then and you just hit play, the punch in and punch out function um, defines where the record button starts to record. So if I press now record over here, you will see when I hit play and maybe I should go for example, over here. And when the play cursor hits here, it starts recording automatically. And here it stops again. Okay, so I hit play or stop to reset everything. And then I deactivate punch in, punch out. Always remember to deactivate punch in, punch out. So then I have here with this mute button, with the fifth one, toggle automation selected tracks. So you can just open from the selected track all automations if you want to see them. Just open it and then you see all automations you have defined here. 
very practical thing because it if you start to record something or you just want to see something you can just on and off that or switch it on and off again <laughs> okay then on the record button over here there there you can switch on and off the metronome over here this one with the mute button if there's something selected or region selected you can zoom in or zoom completely out on the whole arrangement so i zoom in maybe i'm here and just select this um, this clip so i can zoom in in this clip or zoom out in the complete arrangement then there's the playback follow knob so maybe make this a little bit faster so this is practically this knob if i press this button it switches it on and off so if i start playing for example and it's on the whole arranger will follow the play button or maybe the 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 play cursor stays in the middle and the arranger will pass by instead so it should start soon i hope did i turn it on i did turn it on so now you see the arranger is moving and if i switch that off it stops if i switch it on again it stops um, nice function as well if i jump back to the arranger and you see it's not moving I just turn that up, turn it on and uh, start play and the arranger jumps to that position too. So very practical function. So then I have something that is called here layout mix and layout arranger. This is mute uh, 7 and mute 8. So the last mute buttons, the most last is 7, changes to the mixer view and the last mute button to the ranger views, uh, view so i can just switch very quick to different views and work in here and down there there is a um, focus track header and a device lane toggle so device lane toggle is very easy it just open and closes here the device lane you need that very often if you want to work with uh, remote controls and everything and the other thing focus track header so bitig always changes uh, the inspector panel to for example the device you are selecting and uh, things where you see the the modulations and everything but sometimes i want to always be able to jump back to the track details so this view this is on the keyboard the t shortcut like theater so but sometimes it changes like that and that's why i changed this seventh record button to change the inspector on the current track so for example if i work with a compressor i can just check here the gain reduction for example or i can check if the peaks are over my my uh, fader level for example okay and that is everything there is on this controller so in my point of view this is a um, very logical build up of the functions because i set all the rotary knobs to the current track or a selected track all the fader uh, all the faders to the uh, modes of the generic flexi script so to track mode volume mode panorama mode device mode and all the send modes then i set these buttons to next and previous modes this is my temporary um, solo track here i have the the permanent solo selected track here i have the mute and the record or the arm here is my complete uh, transport um, area the very important undo button then the next and previous item and uh, next and premium item page from the generic flexi um, mode function then the global shift button that has currently 
for my for my use only the um, toggle on off repeat button together with the play button so if i hold down shift and then press the play button um, you toggle on and off the repeat functions then you have the different functions for the for the arranger track row high toggle the remote controls in the device punch in punch out for recording then uh, toggle the automation tracks zooming a little bit layout changing between mix and arranger then device lane um, toggle on and off or um, open and close and focus track header in the inspector that's everything that that are basically 51 functions plus multiply it with all the uh, modes there are in this controller and that is now for me a controller that works in my workflow that is not limited by oh okay we have implemented some functions and yeah okay that's enough we don't need more so this is something i can work with and this is very satisf satisfying to work with such an implementation if you have any other ideas about how you implement uh, this controller or this generic flexi script or the function or which functions do you need, for example, more because everyone's uh, workflow is a little bit different, let me know in the comments, write me, let others know if you have some ideas how to do it in a better way, maybe some more sophisticated solutions and so on, then let me know about that. So that's it again. My name is Olo Sendai Thank you for your time and attention. And I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy, save the future. Take care. See you then. Ciao, ciao.